Hi everybody, this is a video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to add more high quality imagery to your blog using a new image editor which we've added in the Joomla installation. So let's get right to it. Let's go to fashionnewslive.com forward slash login and here we have our login. I'm going to use a test user Feel free to use your own user. Here we are. So we're logged in. I'm going to ask that you not use Quick Post because the editor is not available in Quick Post. In Quick Post, all we really have access to is a very Spartan text box, and that's not really enough for what we need to do. Let's go to Write right here. Once we go into Write, we're presented with some options. I'm going to choose not to publish my post. Obviously you would choose otherwise. Uh, once categories have been added, you can then go ahead and choose categories. I'm going to say how to add high quality imagery to your blog posts. Alright, I'm also going to ask that you not use the black and white links, images, and videos insertion tools because we have much more powerful tools available to us right underneath here. And if your editor happens to be hidden, just click on the show and hide in, uh, links right there and it'll pop up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to insert some text because it's always useful to have some paragraph copy that we can insert an image into. So I'm going to do that right now. So there we go. I've added some paragraph copy. I've just copied and pasted it in. So essentially we have some text that we put in for our article. So now let's get to the fun part. We're going to add images. I want you to click on the image icon, the image manager icon. It looks like a little Polaroid or a little image. It's colorful. Let's click on that one time. You can try to use Google Chrome, um, but I'm using Firefox here. On Firefox, um, current version is 5.01. Uh, you can use a later version. It seems to work very uh, efficiently. So the first thing that happens is the box pops up. And there seems to be a lot of options for us. What I'm going to tell you is don't concern yourself with rollover, advanced, and pop-ups. Those are options that we're not interested in. They're not really useful for us in this particular situation. So we're not really going to concern ourselves with them. All you really want to concern yourself with is the image tab. Okay, All these other tabs, not very useful for what you want to do for your blogging. You also don't have to really concern yourself with the URL tab or the alternate text tab or the dimensions just yet. In fact, all you really want to care about are this row of icons halfway down the pop-up and all the way to the right. So as you can see, there's switch view mode, new folder, upload, and help. Of these, I really only want you to be interested in two of them. The first one is switch view mode. When we click on that, what happens is the editor creates thumbnails for us so we can quickly go through right if we click on one its information pops up on the right very very useful its dimensions and other options that we can use it's also selected in order to unselect it we need to click on it one more time okay so there's two views there's the list view like a file manager view and then there's the thumbnail view okay we want to make sure that whenever we list files in the image editor, we're always using show all. We want to see all the files. Right now, we're not going to deal with any of them that are already uploaded. We're going to upload new images. And this is where the power of the image editor really shines. And we want to click on the upload icon. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, so upload is now waiting for us to drop files here. Now if you're using Chrome or some other browser and you try to drop files from your 
um, PC or Mac. Here I have a folder called imagery and I have images in it. If you try to drag your files over and they don't, I haven't dropped it yet, but if you try to drag them over and they don't go, don't worry because you can always use browse down here and you can browse for them. However, if you use Firefox, there really is no reason why you shouldn't be able to not only add one, but check this out now. I'm going to select all these images. Let's say you have 20 of them. I'm selecting them all, okay, and check this out. I'm dragging all of them over here. Look at that. Is that awesome? Not, not only can I add massive numbers of images at one time, which is a huge productivity gain, not only can I do a whole shoot, a whole film roll, but I can also click on the images and rename them just by clicking on their names. This is so, 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 so useful because you want to make sure that your images don't have spaces in them. So this doesn't have spaces in it, but if it did, you definitely want to put an underscore where a space would be. So I usually put underscores I mean, you can do hyphens, you can do dashes, they're fine. But look how quickly I can go through, like, wallpaper. Like, let's say wallpaper had a space in it like that. That's, that's a big no-no. You don't want to have any spaces in your file names. That will screw a lot of things up. So I'm just using the underscore, which is uh, shift and the key to the right of the zero at the top of the keyboard. It shows their sizes. So now that I'm done with my file name editing, and I don't want to resize them, even though I could if I wanted to. I'm just clicking on empty space here. I could click resize and it would resize all of them to these dimensions. I don't want to do that because they're all different sizes and I want to leave them the sizes that they are. We can resize them later. So now that I have all of these images, I'm going to upload them by clicking upload. Notice what happens. You get a status notification, you get a percentage notification as it's uploading. It's telling you which ones were uploaded, how much of each file is being uploaded, and the status of that file. So like I said, you could be coming back from a shoot, you could have 50 images, drag them all in. If you need to do file names, you could quickly knock that out, and that's that. So it's saying it's done at 100% here, and all five of the previous ones are also done. It's telling me it's not quite complete. So we're going to see if wallpaper 66, 1976 actually shows up. So we're done with this. Because we're done, we're going to hit close. Okay. So now we're going to scroll down to see if there's new images. And as you can see, some new images have shown up. There they are. Let's go to list view right here and show them in a list. If you look at them in list view, you will actually see them highlighted. Or not highlighted, but they're bold. And what looks like happened was the very last one. One, two, three, four, five. The very, very last one, last image in the list was not uploaded. So that might be a little caveat for you to know. The very last one wasn't uploaded. In any given list, perhaps the very last one won't be. Just a little heads up. Now, so far, I've showed you how to upload lots of images. These are example images, and I will delete them. So we can um, obviously not fill up production with all of these irrelevant images. So the first one I'm going to work on that's, uh, that might get confused with the other images is one called Angela Winter. So I'm going to select that one. All right, here's Angela Winter. And it's telling me how big it is. It's quite a big file. Well, 833 by 1000, the web size file. So, okay, Joe, we've gone ahead and we've uploaded images. What's so cool about the image editor? Why are we dealing with this? Okay, this is why. The first thing I want to show you about the image editor that you're really going to love is you can actually change the properties of images. And I'm not talking about sizes here. If you notice that when you look at the properties of an image, right, always on the right side, the details of an image, doesn't matter whether you're in thumbnail or whether you're in list view, it doesn't matter. It'll always show the image properties. Now, if you're looking at the image properties, notice that to the right, there are some buttons, 
okay, on the very lower right corner of the image editor, there are some buttons. There's uh, not not these buttons. Those are the those will make the pop-up go away. I'm talking about these little buttons. There's one that deletes the image. Don't want to do that unless you're absolutely sure. In fact, we're going to be taking that away so we don't accidentally delete stuff. There's a rename button. If you click on that, you can rename the file. We're not going to do that. Yeah, because if you rename them, your links will break. Obviously, you rename them unless you update your links. Um, so yeah, there we go. So what we're going to do is grab Angela Winter and we're going to go into the lower right corner of the screen where there are details and we're going to highlight, we're going to hover over these buttons. One button at the very bottom, the very first one at the very bottom, says create thumbnail. We're going to ignore that one. We're going to go to the next one because we don't want to create thumbnails. We do not want to add more images as thumbnails. The very next one up on the list after create thumbnail is edit image. So it's the second one up from the bottom. This is the one I want you to be interested in, okay? And the reason is the following. Click on that, check this out. An image editor will load, all right? So now you've got an image editor showing you the image. Check this out, hit the resize accordion at the top there, you can now resize it. There's even presets for you, but you can resize it. Now, that would be interesting, but we're going to go one step further. If you click on the crop option under resize, you can choose to crop this image. So if we choose to constrain, we always, always, always want to constrain unless we really know what we're doing with cropping, with aspect ratios. We want to choose the little constrain checkbox. So then when we grab the corners of the crop, as you can see, there's corners in the crop tool. So now we're actually going to crop this image so that it doesn't have these white borders anymore. Uh, and the way we do that is we hover the mouse so that it stays right over the corner control handle and that it turns from a normal mouse cursor into a little diagonal, see, n not a hand, but a little black diagonal slash with a little arrow. We want that to appear. Once that occurs, we hold down, we click down, and we move. We drag, basically. There we go. And we have our... Notice that our uh, crop area is locked to the image's size. It doesn't just go in any size, so we can't screw up the, the aspect ratio of the image. You might notice that there's a hand, right? You see that there's a hand here, a, a hand cursor when you go into the inside of the crop area. What that hand does is it lets you move the crop area. So you can actually reposition the crop area. Once we're happy with the way the crop is going, or the way we've set it up to be, we click on apply. And once we apply, notice that we've cropped the image. Also notice at the lower and at the bottom of that uh, pop-up, there's an undo button. Okay, we could actually undo this. And we don't want to do that because, well, this is a demonstration. I don't really care. But you can undo something. I wouldn't advise going crazy with this and just trying out lots of things because you might uh, you might go too far. But uh, you can undo. There's also rotation. So if something is like askew, if something's upside down, you can fix it. You're no longer forced to go into Photoshop. You can actually not only is there an undo, you can flip horizontally. So if you want to give a new twist to an image, often you can flip horizontally and it gives a whole new feeling to the way that image looks. Without significantly altering the... You gotta be careful with this, because if you do this with text, if it was like a uh, cab and it flips it around, it might not look right, because it goes from right to left to left to right. You don't read from right to left in the West, you read from left to right. But if there's no text involved and it's just images, you can put a new spin on images just by flipping them horizontally. Just a little tip. Don't go crazy with it. Okay, so we rotated it, all right? Okay, Joel, that's kind of cool. It's all in the editor. That, that is kind of awesome. What, what next? Well, we're not done. Let's go to the Effects tab. Now check this out. This is where the real power of the image editor comes into its own. If you don't like the color of an image, the sepia tone here, you can actually make it grayscale. We've desaturated it. Look at that. Now it's completely grayscale. A whole new character to the image comes up. Okay, well, what if I don't want that? You undo it. And it's back. All right. 